Continuing in section 3.3, we're looking at the component resistors. Resistors are fundamental components in electronic circuits. A resistor is constructed to have a specific amount of resistance to current flow. The range of resistors may be from less than 1 ohm to well over 20 million ohms or 20 mega ohms. Fixed resistors have a single value of resistance, but variable resistors can provide different values of resistance. And here we have a few resistors over here in this nice little uh, image. And here is a photograph of a whole bunch of resistors. Resistors are rated by their value of resistance and the power they can safely dissipate. Every resistor has a power rating. The power rating is to a large degree determined by its size. The greater the surface area, the more power it can dissipate. Power ratings of resistors vary from less than one-tenth of a watt to many hundreds of watts. Resistor tolerance is a measure of the resistor's variation from the specified value. Resistor tolerance is expressed as a percentage of its nominal value. Typical resistor tolerances are 1% and 5%, with tighter tolerance resistors being somewhat more expensive. So the, if you have a need for high tolerance resistors, typically you will pay for them, and they are referred to as precision resistors. And if the, if the um, resistors have tolerances of less than 2%, typically they are referred to as precision resistors. There are four major classes of fixed resistor technology. And we're going to be looking at, uh, let's see, the first one is carbon composition. Then we'll look at film resistors. We'll look at wire round. And we'll also look at surface mount technology. Then let's get back to our first one here. The first one is carbon composition. And they are made of finely ground carbon. This is a, uh, well, it's a low resistive material. And then they're also made with powdered filler. And this is a high resistance material. The ratio of carbon to filler material determines the resistance. And so this is the idea of carbon composition. They're made of carbon and this powdered filler. And the ratio of the carbon to the filler will determine the resistance. Power ratings can be increased by making the resistor larger. Film resistors. They are made by depositing a thin layer of resistive material onto an insulating tube or rod called the substrate. And here we have the substrate in here. This is commonly ceramic or something of that nature. And it's made by depositing a thin layer of resistive material around that uh, substrate. The leads are attached to the end caps which contact the resistive film. And so here we have the, um, the end cap, and there would be one on this side as well, and they're attached to the leads. The resistive layer is trimmed with an industrial laser until it has the desired resistance. And so you're going to have that coating of resistive layer, and then the industrial laser will trim it off until you have the resistance that you desire. And I have a little line here that says less is more. And the idea here is that the thinner the layer of resistive material, the higher the resistance will be. And this method is called spiraling and produces resistors very close to the desired value. And this is referring to the use of the industrial laser to trim them. And then here, again, is a cutaway of a film resistor. Um, here is the, uh, the substrate. Oftentimes, this is ceramic. And then the metal, metallic film is what is the resistive material. And then the, uh, this is the coating that would cover the resistor. 
Then we have wire wound resistors. And they are made by winding resistive wire around an insulating wire. And so here you see the windings around this resistor. The ends of the wire are connected to leads and the body of the resistor is coated with a hard insulative jacket. So here we have the, the ends, the um, leads, and then here is the, um, the coating. In this case, the resistor value is determined by, uh, first of all, the type of wire. Uh, and then the diameter. How thick is the wire? The thicker the wire, the less the resistance. And the length of the wire. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance. And they are used for high power and precise values. And let's see, here we have a term. It says, alloy resistance wire wound to specific parameters, including TCR. Now, TCR means temperature coefficient of resistance from plus or minus 20 to 5,500. And the PPM is parts per million per centigrade, or parts per million per degree, parts per million per degree centigrade. Then we have surface mount technology. Uh, these have no leads. Their contacts solder directly to the circuit board pads. And pictures to the right here, we have a um, surface mount. And there here is an example of the leads here. This and this piece here would actually solder to the circuit board. And this is a cutaway of a surface mount resistor. And a photo of several surface mount resistors compared to the head of the pin are shown down here. So you here see you see surface mount components. Here is the head of the pin. So you see that these are uh, quite small. Surface mount resistors are used on computer system boards and other applications where components need to be very small. Surface mount resistor markings. Many surface mounted components have no visible markings and must be measured with test equipment to determine their value. Some manufacturers indicate the value of a surface mount resistor with a numerical code. The first digit or digits indicate the value of the resistor and the last digit the multiplier. So if you had the number 103, it would mean 10 with three zeros and this would be indicating 10k ohms. And in these, this case over here, here, let's look at the first one here. You have a 39 with a 1, so this would indicate 390 ohms. In this picture above, uh, this is a uh, circuit board, and you'll notice right here, you see that component, this one, this one, and this one. Those are all uh, surface mount resistors. Resistor color code. And we're, first of all, we're going to look at uh, three and four band resistors. Since resistors are physically small, it is impractical to print the value of the resistor on it. Manufacturers mark resistors with three to five colored bands to indicate their value. Three or four band resistors can be interpreted by the following Procedure. Now, we're going to talk about five band in a few moments, but for right now, we're looking at three and four band. And this one happens to be a four band component. The first two bands represent the first two digits of the resistive value. And we haven't talked about color code yet, but in this case, the yellow and the purple would indicate the, um, the resistive value. Then the uh, multiply the digits obtained in step one by the multiplier value. And in this case, uh, the orange here is going to indicate how many zeros this will be. So the first two are going to indicate a numeric value, and then we're going to add the number of zeros specified by the third. If a fourth band is present, it indicates the tolerance. If there is no fourth band, the tolerance is expected to be plus or minus 20%. So in this particular case, when we talk about three or four band, um, the idea if it's a four band, then there's going to be a band here that indicates the tolerance. If it's simply a three band resistor, the tolerance is expected to be uh, 20%. Now, 
resistor color code. This is something if you work in the um, uh, electronics industry, you're going to have to memorize this code somehow. And there's all kinds of little um, mnemonics out there to uh, memorize it. I'm not going to go into them. Some of them are um, <clears throat> kind of unsuitable for uh, putting on a, <clears throat> a recording. Uh, but anyway, uh, so here we have black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. And so these various colors will uh, translate to the, to the um, stripes that we have on the uh, component. And so uh, just to look at this component and parallel it with uh, what we've got here, yellow uh, is, here, the first stripe would be 4, and then this is violet, violet is 7, and then that would give us 47. The third stripe here, which is orange, would mean uh, 47 with the 47 K, 47,000, and then the silver here uh, would indicate that it is 10% tolerance. But this is how you would use this um, uh, color code information. And this is one of those things, like I mentioned, if you're going to work in the electronics industry, you're going to have to literally memorize uh, this information. And here we have the uh, the four code. We just talked about this one here. Um, this is another example. If the first uh, uh, stripe is red, that would indicate a two. And if here we have violet, which is seven, and orange, which is three, and that would indicate uh, three zero. So this is 27,000 ohms. We would usually write that as 27K ohms, kind of like that. And the silver indicates that this has a tolerance of 10 percent. So this is the technical data about this component. And then here I, I brought this, this resistor back. Um, the resistor below has a four color code. And again, this is a four color code. This is the actual component. And again, we had 47. This is the 4, uh, the 7. The orange indicates the uh, three zeros. And so that is 47K. And we already talked about the silver. That means 10% tolerance. Um, now, I, I actually connected this up to my handy dandy little digital uh, ohmmeter. And this is the component uh, connected across the negative and the positive terminals of the probe leads. And you can see the measurement here. One of the reasons I did this is because it doesn't say exactly 47K. It says 47,100. And that uh, lends credence to why I'm mentioning this here. Um, given 10% tolerance, its measured value would be, it could vary between uh, 42.3K to 51.7K. So that means 10% tolerance, it uh, means it's 47K, and that would be plus or minus 4,700 ohms. Now, you'll see that this is well uh, within the tolerance, but the, the silver stripe says that it's, that it will be within 10%. That doesn't mean it will be 10% off, but it means that it won't go outside of that uh, tolerance. Then we have precision resistors, and these typically are, uh, they have five bands instead of four. Now, it's very similar to what we just looked at with the three and four band components with just a little bit of variation. With these, the first three colors indicate the resistance value. Now, remember, with the four band, the first two, now we're going to use the first three. The fourth band is the multiplier which is the same as we did with four band. The fifth band is the tolerance. Now, again, uh, now the thing is that with the fifth, with, with precision resistors, we have um, a different set of uh, colors here, or more colors, let us put it that way, and we have some much tighter tolerances that um, these components will comply with. And I think I have a picture on the next screen, okay. Here is a five color, and so this particular component, the first band is red for 2, violet for 7, brown for 1, 
and then the orange again is 3, so that would be 3, 0, so this would be 271 uh, K ohms. And since the uh, final stripe is green, we would see from over here that green is 0.5%, uh, so this would be within, point, within half a percent of this value and that is a precision resistor using the five band striping method. Now let's see there is another standard which uses the fifth band um, as a reliability index. Now the first four would be um, well let's see the first excuse me the the first two are going to indicate the first two digits then you have the multiplier and then you have the tolerance band but the fifth band is a reliability, i.e. a failure rate. And you'll note here um, if, the, uh, if, it, if it's brown, it means it has these components will typically, 1% of them will fail after 1,000 hours of use. And, as the, and then as the uh, reliability factor goes up, if it's yellow, only 0.001, one thousandth of 1% of these will fail after a thousand hours of usage. So those would be very high precision resistors with an extremely high uh, reliability rate. Variable resistors. Sometimes it is desirable to change the value of a resistor installed in a circuit. The resistance of a variable resistance is controlled by turning, it could be a knob, could be rotating a screw, or it could be moving a slider. At any rate, um, you can vary a resistor if it is in fact a variable resistor. Now there are two major classes of variable resistors. There's rheostats and potentiometers. Now rheostats, they usually have two terminals and the resistance between the two terminals changes. Potentiometers, they usually have three terminals and the resistance between the two end terminals does not change. So let's take a, a closer look at these. Okay, there are some examples of variable resistors. And here is one where the uh, you change it by turning a screw, and there's one you change it by turning a screw again. Most of these are by turning a little screw. Uh, these actually have a big knob, and you would actually, this looks like this, this has a, a knob you physically turn. This one has one you would adjust with a screw. So they come in all different sizes and shapes. Now let's look at this. We're going to look at what is a rheostat and, and then compare it to a potentiometer. Now important thing to remember about a rheostat is that a rheostat has two connection points. And so here we have um, a rheostat. I'm going to show this is one connection point and this is another. Maybe I'll put a um, ground down here. Um, and the uh, maybe I'll put a circuit in here. Let's see. Let's see if I put a circuit in here. Maybe I'll put a. Um, let's pretend this is a light bulb, and then we'll come up here and we'll connect this to 15 volts. And so here we have this situation. The arrow indicates an adjustment. Okay. So here we have this arrow, and that means that this can be adjusted. If the arrow rises, the resistance across the two points increases. So you'll see that the path for current comes up here, and it's got to go through. And, and if, if, if the arrow was down at a low point, that, air, that, that current can just pass right through here. In fact, if this was adjusted way down to a point maybe down here, then uh, this would, you could, there'd be zero resistance. And likewise, if this arrow was, is, it was across up here, then current would come up, and it would have to go through virtually the whole component. Um, now, why would you do this? Well, in this particular situation, the way I have drawn this, uh, remember that um, uh, current uh, equals voltage divided by resistance. And in this particular case, we are varying the resistance through the circuit. And so as the uh, resistance goes down, Okay, the current goes up, and if we have this light bulb here, that light bulb will uh, get brighter. And so this could be a, uh, a circuit to uh, dim or brighten this light switch. And, but anyway, the important thing we're trying to get at here is a rheostat, 
and a rheostat has two connections and it is used to as a variable resistor. Then we have a potentiometer. Now a potentiometer has three connection points. Now notice here, here we have a, um, let's just pretend this is ground here. Uh, we have this connection point, we have a connection point here, and we have a connection point here. And if we were to go up here and connect this to, say we connected this again to uh, 15 volts. Now in this particular case, the, you'll notice that the resistance between here and here remains unchanged. But we're feeding a, 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 um, a value over here that's based on how much resistance is being picked off uh, when this arm is adjusted. And if we, if we were to go over here, we could use this as a, uh, a variable control for voltage. And it could go from 0 to uh, 15 volts. So this is a potentiometer. Then here we have the symbols for these. Here is a symbol for a rheostat. Notice the arrow indicating that it is variable. And note that there is uh, two connection points. Um, this is the uh, schematic symbol for a potentiometer. Notice again we still have the arrow indicating the ability to vary. But notice that there are three connection points. And so um, the, the, the resistance between here and here does not change. but the value that's, that's read off of here uh, will vary based on where this, this, this adjuster is placed across that um, component. Now here is a potentiometer connected as a rheostat. If you look at this circuit, you'll see it looks very similar to this, except that the end has been tied around and connected to the top. Now this is a potentiometer that is um, connected to function as a rheostat. So notice this, so, so we have uh, one, we have two connection points, which makes us a rheostat, vice the potentiometer, which has three. And then this is another potential connection using a potentiometer for a rheostat. In this case, um, the, uh, the bottom of the potentiometer is not connected, so we're just using this connection point and this connection. So again, we have two connection points, which makes it a rheostat. Okay, this brings uh, our lesson on resistance, resistors to a conclusion. We've looked at uh, rheostats. Uh, we've looked at potentiometers. We've talked a little bit, well, here, variable resistors. They come under the categories of potentiom or, uh, rheostats and potentiometers. We looked at um, uh, precision resistors using uh, five-band color codes. And we looked at resistors using the uh, three and four band color codes. And here we have our color code. It's imperative that you memorize this color code if you're going to work in the field of electronics. And um, we talked about surface mount. We talked about four types of resistors, the surface mount, wire wound, film, and carbon composition. That concludes our session on resistors.